Welcome to Entry Point Faith. Join us each week to discover fresh meaning in the world and find faith your way. Now, here is Pastor Nancy Lafferty. So Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote these words, Life is a journey, not a destination. What exactly did he mean by that phrase? Well, let's look at the definition of two of those key words in the phrase, journey and destination. A destination is a place that you arrive, an end point. A journey is the act of traveling from one place to another. So I guess Emerson means that we shouldn't look at our life as just a place to stop but as an experience of traveling from one stop to another. But where are we traveling to on our life journey and what should our journey look like? Are there certain things that we should pack for our journey? Are there places that we should avoid? Is it kind of like planning a vacation, taking certain roads but avoiding others, packing our suitcases in anticipation of good or bad weather? Joe Hands tells us that there are some things we should do more as we are traveling along, and there are some things that we should do less often. For example, we should do more of what makes us happy. We should do more of what we are good at. We should do more of what develops and stretches us, and we should associate more with people that inspire and challenge us. And what we should do less of is what makes us miserable. We should do much less of what makes us uninspired. And what we know in our gut is not good for us. I think in both both cases, doing more or doing less, we have a good bit of choice in the matter. It's almost like those choose-your-own-adventure books. Are you familiar with that? A long time ago, I think my oldest son and maybe my youngest son as well, kids got to literally pick in the, in the book where they were going to go, what the end result of each character was going to be. And the reality is that is our life. We do get to choose our own adventure, but we all know that there are things along the way that we cannot control that end up landing in our lap. We never know, just like Pocahontas what is just around the bend. We are often surprised by incredibly good news and by unbelievable tragedy. On our journey, there will be great days. There will be speed bumps, and there will be moments so sad that we will be stopped in our tracks. The hardest days will demonstrate to us our tenacity, our passion, and our ability to just keep going. While we are in the middle of that moment of difficulty, it is so overwhelming that we don't even think we can get through it. And then we do. And then we're able to reflect back and feel proud that we managed to get through it. Now, occasionally, as we are traveling along, we should take a breather, and we should reflect on those things we have achieved where we are, and how we're doing in the process. We need to consider whether or not we need to make a course correction. We need to relish in the difficulties that have been overcome and feel good about our growth and our success. In like manner, we might need to spend some time assessing our spiritual journey. We're allowed to stop and reflect on how we're doing and and on what we believe and why we believe it. We need to consider whether or not we need to do anything to correct our spiritual course, do something differently, go someplace differently. And there is clearly no mistaking that those difficult moments leave us often feeling ill-equipped to manage a situation. Kind of like how I felt when I realized I was going to be directing over 60 kids on stage and responsible for another dozen backstage. Along my life journey as a director, I had never directed that many cast members who were so young. I had directed 50 high school kids before with a full-paid staff. 
not volunteering to do this by myself with some volunteers. It has been an off-the-map experience for me, but I have to say, it has been remarkable. Like all of our journeys, when we wander away from our comfort zone and we get into unknown territory, we end up growing and we end up learning the most. We find ourselves inspired by the very thing that terrified us. And then we feel that weird sense of accomplishment and we feel energized for the next step on the journey. Additionally, it is incredibly important that we remember that we are not traveling alone on our journey. Psalm 23 reminds us that God is always with us. This psalm was written as a song to God, and the psalmist writes, Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid, because you are with me. Jean Dormesson has written a very interesting poem called The Train of Life, and it goes like this. At birth, we boarded the train of life and we met our parents, and we believed they would always be by our side. However, at some station, our parents would step down from the train, leaving us on life's journey alone. As time goes by, some significant people will board the train, siblings, other children, friends, and even the love of our life, or the loves of our life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum. Others will go, uh, go so unnoticed that we won't even realize they have vacated their seats. This train ride has been a mixture of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes, and true farewells. A successful journey consists of having a good relationship with all passengers, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. The mystery that prevails is that we do not know at which station we ourselves will step down. Thus, we try to travel along the track of life in the best possible way, loving, forgiving, giving, sharing. When the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who continue to travel on the train of life. Let's remember to thank our Creator for giving us life to participate in the journey. Now, like many musicals, the songs for the musical Willy Wonka were written by a songwriting team made up of two men, Leslie Bercusi and Anthony Newley. Leslie Bercusi's favorite song that he has written throughout his very prolific lifetime is the song Pure Imagination that begins the production of Willy Wonka. He also believes that this song will be his most lasting legacy. Written over 50 years ago, Pure Imagination has been covered by multiple singers and groups, including Lou Rawls and Maroon 5. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. Sarah Watkins, who covered the song on a recent album, said in an interview that out of nowhere, the song rescued her when she was in a difficult time. As she sang the words, she remembers how she felt at a different time when she was happy. She stated, I remembered there is joy. There is happiness, there is imagination, there is this world outside of just this heavy feeling that I have right now. <clears throat> of his lyrics, Leslie Bercusi has said that when he wrote the song, he realized that his words were a good thought for people, especially young people, to carry with them through life. 
the last line of the song is this. You'll be free if you truly wish to be. Bercusi believes those words to be the most important line in the entire musical because it is a reflective thought on how to make your life work. So could it be that the children's musical, Willy Wonka, has some spiritual significance and has a great deal to teach us about our life journey? I believe it does. On our life journey, we don't always know where we're going. We are always surprised and disappointed. We go through hills and valleys. We have good times and bad times. Sometimes we travel alone. Sometimes we are with people. And often, the people we travel with change. We don't know what is just around the bend. We can't plan for things that will happen. But there are a few ways to make the journey better. Remember that God is with us as we travel. We can think positive, and we can use our imagination to recall beautiful memories and to help us visualize a better outcome. Pretty sound advice, I believe. Yaharyal Nehru has written these beautiful words. We live in a wonderful world that is full of beauty, charm, and adventure. There is no end to the adventures we can have if only we seek them with our eyes open. Amen. Thanks for listening in on this week's discussion on Entry Point Faith. You can join the Entry Point Faith community in person every Sunday at 1030 a.m. at Connor Prairie in Fishers, Indiana. For more information and a transcript of Nancy's messages, visit entrypointonline.org. Entry Point Faith is brought to you in partnership with mypodcast.media.